Every coin in your pocket has a secret. That shiny quarter at the bottom of your bag? It might have cost more to make than it's worth. That penny on the sidewalk? It survived fire, acid baths, crushing force and more before landing in the world. Billions of coins are born every year inside the U.S. Mint, one of the most secure and fascinating factories in the country. But how does ordinary metal turn into money? Today, we're stepping through the locked doors to watch the full process, from giant metal coils to the coins you spend every day. Step one, the metal arrives. Coins begin as giant metal coils. Imagine a steel ribbon as long as four football fields and weighing several tons. They're delivered under guard because even though they're not coins yet, they're worth a fortune in raw material. Each type of coin has its own formula. Pennies are mostly zinc with a thin copper skin, nickels are a copper nickel blend, and dimes and quarters are copper sandwiched inside nickel like a metallic Oreo cookie. Massive cranes hoist the rolls onto turbines that slowly uncoil them. The sight is mesmerizing. Miles of shiny ribbon sliding forward, ready to be sliced into money. Fun fact, the coils are so heavy that one wrong move with a crane could crush a car instantly. Step two, cutting the blanks. The metal ribbon feeds into the blanking press a monster machine that punches out thousands of discs every minute. It's basically the world's loudest cookie cutter, and instead of dough, it's chewing through solid metal. Each strike cuts perfect circles called blanks, the skeleton of a future coin. Right now, they look plain, rough, and sharp-edged. On the floor nearby, huge sheets of leftover metal called webbing drop into bins. Workers rake them like piles of autumn leaves, though these leaves are worth thousands of dollars in scrap. Nothing goes to waste. The webbing is shredded and recycled into fresh coils. At this point, the blanks don't look like money at all, but they're exactly the right thickness to become one. Step 3. Trial by Fire Annealing. Blanks are strong, but too hard to take on detailed designs. The solution? Fire. They're loaded into giant rotating drums and rolled into a furnace blazing at nearly 1,600 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hotter than molten lava. Inside, the heat softens the metal, making it ready for stamping later. Here's the clever part. The furnace is sealed without oxygen. That prevents the blanks from burning, warping, or turning black. When the drums roll back out, the sight is incredible. Thousands of glowing red discs tumbling forward like fiery poker chips. The heat radiates through the air, workers stand well back. These softened blanks are now perfect for shaping, but fresh from the furnace, they need cooling fast. Otherwise, they'd fuse together in seconds. Step four, quenching and cleaning. The fiery blanks plunge straight into tanks of special water, and the factory explodes with hissing steam. But this isn't ordinary water. It's mixed with lubricants and citric acid. The lubricant stop blanks from sticking together after their scorching bath. The acid strips away oxide and grime, restoring a clean shine. For pennies, the acid also reveals that fresh copper coating, giving them the glow we all recognize. Watching it is like coins being baptized in mist. Within seconds, the glowing discs cool enough to touch. Workers scoop handfuls out to check their shine. These baths aren't just cosmetic, they prepare the metal for the next phase. By now, the blanks look cleaner, brighter, and far closer to becoming real money. Step five, washing and drying. After their acid bath, blanks need one last cleanup. In Denver, giant scoop baskets lift thousands at a time, dunking them like metal dumplings in detergent baths. In Philadelphia, whirl drums slowly spin tossing blanks against each other while cleaners bubble through. Both methods remove every trace of dirt and coat the blanks with anti-tarnish chemicals, protecting them from staining. The sound is constant. Tens of thousands of coins clattering at once like the world's biggest jar of change. At the end, they roll through dryers, blasting hot air so no spots or streaks remain. When they emerge, they're shiny, smooth, and uniform, 
They still don't carry designs, but for the first time, they look like something you could actually spend. Step six, raising the rim. Pick up a coin and feel the thin raised border along the edge. That rim protects the artwork from wearing down and keeps coins stacking neatly. Without it, designs would vanish quickly and machines wouldn't recognize the coins. To create it, blanks pass through the upsetting mill. This machine forces each disc through a tight groove slightly smaller than the blank itself. The pressure squeezes the metal upward, forming a crisp, protective rim. It's quick, mechanical, and strangely satisfying to watch. At this point, the blank earns a new name, Planchet. From now on, only perfect planchets continue the journey. The rim might look like a minor detail, but it's the unsung hero that lets coins survive years of jingling, stacking, and spending. Step seven, inspection, no room for error. Before striking, every planché is judged. High-speed cameras scan thousands every minute, checking weight, diameter, and rim height. If even one disc is too light or too thick, it's pulled from the line. Faulty planchés are melted down and recycled. Why so serious? Because counterfeiting is real. In 2020, officials in Chicago seized over a million dollars in fake coins. By keeping tolerances razor tight, the mint makes counterfeiting nearly impossible. Watching the inspection line is hypnotic. A silver river of planchés racing past lasers and cameras. The machines don't blink, don't miss a thing. Only the flawless survivors move on. It's a reminder that before a coin carries a president's face, it has to prove it's worthy of being money. Step eight, striking. Where money is born. Now comes the dramatic moment. Planchets slide into the coin press, sitting between two steel dies, one for the head side, one for the tails. With a deafening slam, the press strikes down with 35 to 100 tons of force. For large commemorative coins, that pressure can reach 540 tons, right? Well, imagine the weight of three blue whales crushing a single disc. In that instant, the design is driven deep into the metal. Every feather, every strand of hair, every tiny letter springs to life. The transformation is instant. A planche becomes a coin. Proof coins are struck multiple times for razor sharp detail while circulation coins get one powerful blow. Each press produces 750 coins per minute, turning out billions every year. Step nine, collars, ridges, and rejects. During striking, each planche sits inside a collar ring. Without it, the coin would flatten like a pancake. With it, the coin keeps its perfect size and dimes and quarters get their signature ridges called reading. Back in the days of silver coins, ridges stopped people from shaving off slivers of precious metal. Today, they're still a trusted anti-counterfeit feature. After striking, coins head to inspection again. Automated cameras catch off-center strikes, double images, or weak details. Mistakes don't survive. Defective coins are destroyed in a machine called the waffler, which bends them into ridged, crumpled shapes. They look like little accordions of metal, never spendable again. The good coins, flawless and uniform, move forward to their final destination. Step 10, bagging and shipping. Perfect coins tumble down chutes into huge canvas bags. Each bag can weigh a full ton, packed with hundreds of thousands of coins. Forklifts lift the bulging sacks into secure storage. They sit there until the Federal Reserve places an order. When banks need coins, armored trucks haul the bags away, delivering them nationwide. From there, the coins scatter everywhere, into laundromats, gas stations, vending machines, parking meters, and eventually your own pocket. The scale is staggering. One day you might spend a quarter at the store that was struck just weeks earlier in Philadelphia or Denver. Every year, billions of coins make this journey. They start as raw ribbon metal, and end as money-fueling America's everyday life. So the next time you hear coins rattling in your pocket, remember their hidden story. Each one began as a massive coil of metal. It was cut by thunderous presses, baked in furnaces hotter than volcanoes, dunked in acid baths, polished, rimmed, 
and slammed with hundreds of tons of force. It survived inspection so strict that even the tiniest flaw meant destruction. What you're holding isn't just spare change. It's a survivor, a piece of engineering, history, and design created inside one of America's most secure factories. Billions more are born every year, and each one carries this incredible journey. If you enjoyed this inside look at the U.S. Mint, subscribe to How It's Crafted for more fascinating stories about how everyday things are made.